Lesson 6 of Unit 3 addresses cross-section creation and quantities. In Exercise 1, you learn how to create and edit sample lines. And sample lines are required for either quantity calculation or cross-section generation. In Exercise 2, you learn about the sample line groups, which is the collection of sample lines. In exercise three, you learn how to calculate corridor quantities. In exercise four, you learn how to create quantity reports. And in exercise five, you learn how to create the section review section views. So once again, the sample line is used to calculate volumes and to create section views. And these are the lines that you associate with an alignment. So when you create a sample line you attach section data to those sample lines. You can attach surface section data which is used for earth cut and fill volume calculation. You can attach corridor surface section data. So for example you would attach the corridor datum surface section data to calculate earth cut and fill. The third type of section data is corridor section data and that's going to allow you to calculate pavement structure volumes and it's going to also show you the corridor in your section views. You can attach pipe network section data if you have a pipe network defined and that will show the pipe data in the section views. And when you attach, when you create, uh, calculate volumes it will automatically attach material section data to your sample lines and that will show you your earth cut areas and your earth fill areas in your section views. So you can see here's your sample lines toolbar and here's your sample lines and they appear in a sample line group in Prospector. So let's go have a look at that. On the home tab of the ribbon, let's create a sample lines for this alignment. We go to sample lines. We'll pick the alignment. And here's your sample line collection. Here's your sample line style and label style. And here's your data source. So the existing ground surface section data, the 8th Avenue datum corridor surface section data, and then the 8th Avenue corridor section data. And now we can use this drop down menu here to create your sample lines. And we can create sample lines at the corridor station locations or at a station. So here it's going to basically, if we use corridor stations, it uses the assembly insertion location. So that's going to be a lot of sample line data. So why don't we go by range of stations? and we'll start at the from alignment start we'll set to false and we'll choose our start station in the drawing as the endpoint here or the intersection of these two alignments and we'll go to the alignment end so we'll set that to true and the swath width let's go 30 feet either side and then for the sampling increment Along the tangents will go every 50 feet and along the curves will go every 20 feet. So if I click OK, you will see now the sample lines created in the drawing area. Now you'll notice that the sample lines aren't wide enough so we'll go back and fix that in a minute. In fact what I'll do is I'll grip the corridor display order send it back and you'll be able to clearly see the black sample lines how they don't extend into the full section of the corridor model. So in exercise two you learn how to modify the properties of the sample line group and that is essentially the collection of sample lines in Prospector and that's what we'll have a look at right now. So you can sample more data sources in your sample line group, you can delete and edit sample lines, you can also change the width of the sample line. So in Prospector, if we go to Alignments, 
center line alignments, there's 8th Avenue. Here's our sample line group, SL Collection 1. That's what we just created. These are all the individual sample lines that you see here. If I zoom to 1550, there's the sample line for 1550. Here's the section data that we attach to the sample lines. And you can see that we have no section view groups, section views, which is the grid objects yet. So if we modify the property of the sample line group, under the sample lines tab, you can see here's where we can change our offset. So what I'll do is scroll to the bottom, use my shift key to select them all, and let's go 60 feet either side. And if I click OK, you can see now my sample lines in the drawing area will update, and that should be enough to be able to show all of my data correctly in my section views and to calculate my corridor quantities. So back to the sample line group properties. Here's the sample lines. Here's the sections tab where you can add or remove data from your sample lines. So for instance, if I created a pipe network, I could then go back and add those to the sample lines and they would appear in the section views. I don't have any section views yet and I don't have a material list because we haven't calculated any volumes yet. All we've done is created the sample lines, attached the data, and then modified the width. In exercise three, you learn how to calculate the quantities. And you use a earth cut and fill. Uh, it compares existing ground surface and the corridor datum surface. The pavement structure comes from the corridor section data and you use a quantity takeoff criteria and this will create a material list in the sample line group. So the quantity takeoff criteria defines exactly how your volumes are calculated. So let's have a look at one for earth cut and fill under the settings tab of the tool space. If I scroll down to quantity takeoff, here they are, earth cut and fill. If we right click and select edit under the material list tab you can see that the ground removed, which is earth cut, is below EG and above corridor datum. And ground fill, which is earth fill, is above EG and below datum. And you can put in your expansion and compaction factors here, your refill factors. So that's your quantity takeoff criteria. And when you calculate your quantities, you need to match the object name in the drawing with the name in the criteria. So you can see here the name and the criteria is EG and the object name is existing ground. So let's go ahead and calculate the quantities. On the ribbon, if you go to the ana Analyze tab, Volumes and Materials panel, you can compute materials. And this is for a sample line group. So you choose the alignment, you choose your sample line group and click OK. And this is where we need to choose our quantity takeoff criteria. And here's where we match the object name against the name and the criteria. So the name and the criteria is EG. The object name is existing ground. The name and the criteria is datum. The object name is 8th Avenue datum. And if we click OK, we have now calculated the quantities. So nothing's happened yet. The volumes are there. We just need to report them. But the change that happened here, if we go back to Prospector, and if we go to our sample line group, we're going to have material section data added to our section data list here as a result of calculating the volumes. And what I like to do in my sample line group is go back to the properties here and under the material list, rename this material list to earth, cut, and fill. Because what will happen is that when you go to calculate your volumes, you're going to be asked to report a or select a material list. So we'll click OK. And now we can generate a volume report. So in exercise four, you can create a quantity report and you can create a dynamic table in the drawing or you can create a static table in a web browser. So if we click back to Civil 3D, we can now create 
a volume report. And we can create a volume report table. So a volume report will create it in a web browser and total volume table will create the report in the drawing. It's a dynamic table. And if we click OK, there are the total volumes for earth cut and fill in the drawing area. In exercise five, you learn how to create multiple section views. And the section views show the cross-section data. And if we went to the Home tab, under the Profile and Section Views panel, we can create multiple section views. And if we create the section views in the drawing area, these are going to show you what the cross-section looks like at each one of the sample line locations. And there, as you can see, an example of this section view. And if we modify the properties of the sample line group under the Sections tab, we can change the code set style to show the cross-section data with labels. And that will help you interpret the data on your cross-sections a little easier. And here you can see your material where you're in earth cut. And here's your earth fill area with materials. So those are your section views. And the section view group is the organization of the section views in the drawing area. And the group plot st style controls the orientation of the section views. And that concludes the discussion on sample lines, sections, and quantities in Unit 3.